Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. Now, Cedric, before you move on to the Battle of Runcenane, would you be so kind as to uh, step outside with me, just for a moment? Ugh, absolutely. Assuming my leg still works after the kicking that you gave it. Ah, yes. Again. My apologies. Oh, uh, anyway, you'd uh, better grab one of those first skins from the hearth. The snow's getting uh, heavier outside. It is cold. So, go on then. Before you and I turn into man-sized icicles, explain yourself, Septimus. Well, and sorry about the way I went about it. But uh, as much as you know my history and where my allegiances lie, our friend Heinrich inside knows only snippets of my background. And as much as he seems like a, well, a thoroughly decent, if a little eccentric chap, I do not know how he would uh, react if certain facts concerning the real reason I am here in Tabarro and what I really do came to light. He could be a very powerful ally, but likewise, he could also become a very powerful enemy if I do not play my cards correctly. You have to be careful with politics these days, as it can be extremely uh, polarizing believe the word is, especially with uh, both civil strife and civil war hiding behind the corner at every turn. Ah, I see. Well, that does make a lot of sense then. I had assumed he knew about your uh, dual identity, but obviously not. My miss. Although, I don't know if it warranted the heavy boot to my thigh that I received, but I do get it. Anyhow, he'll, uh, he'll be getting suspicious. We'd better get ourselves back inside. It's getting cold anyhow. Our apologies, Heinrich, for keeping you waiting. Ah, no, 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 it is fine. I took the opportunity to take my pick of this uh, fine selection of cheeses that you generously provided. Ah, you are most welcome. But you are without a drink. That needs to be remedied, methinks. I'll get us all some more uh, mulled ale. Whilst you, Cedric, continue with your tale, perhaps. How does that sound? Ach, It'll be my pleasure. Now, before the sun had even risen, the forces of the Alliance were already in place. The first to breach the defences of the castle was the old Drey that had belonged to the Maltman of Loch Lorm. In the wee hours, it had trundled up the old causeway to the main gate, and, in a last-minute change of plan, it was, uh, in fact, driven by Doko McCooligan, the clan laird himself. Out oh, there, you, in the name of the king, answer my questions or on my spear you'll sing. The dark is thick, and the owls are in flight. Tell me what rogues come to run today and this time of night. It is we, the Montmen of Loch Lorm, carrying twelve full barrels of whiskey for the court of Macdeath. That he has not. He will not be pleased if he hears of it. Och, you're over with you. He has been waiting. Open the gate. And so, Docker and his twelve men, hidden in the empty barrels on the dray, gained ingress to the castle's courtyard. But they did not immediately leap out of their hiding places to try and take on the whole castle. Rather, they bided the time, with the clan laird slowly rolling the barrels off the dray and onto the muddy courtyard ground, whilst uh, he waited for dawn to come. As Docker performed this task, 
he observed the comings and goings of the castle. He was surprised to see that, although the guard who had addressed him had been a man, everyone else he appeared to be uh, appeared to be a greenskin, with around two dozen goblin archers manning the upper ramparts, and groups of orc guards moving to and fro around the uh, courtyard, and also manning the towers. Above where the dray had stopped, there was a set of stone stairs leading up to the reception hall of the keep. Upon these, he spied a larger orc. A war boss, no doubt, he thought. It was, in fact, Mogro Neckbreak, the original leader of the shipwrecked orcs, who now acted as the head guard for the Macdeaths. He was armed with a brutal mace and a barbaric shield, decorated with an ugly red face. A large set of keys dangled from his waist. By the time the docker had managed to roll all the barrels off the dray, the sun was starting to rise, and, to the shock of everyone inside the castle, who uh, got to witness it, the castle found itself surrounded by the trees of Clinty's wood. My thin, my king, we are surrounded by what banquo, by geese, by soldiers. Explain. I fear none that oppose me. Nought can hurt me but a spell or the hags upon the heath. I will fear neither for nor death nor being till Clinty's wood comes to Runson in. Aye, you and your sword keep saying that. But if that be true, I hope you've sharpened your axe. Because there's a lot of trees on the other side of the castle's chasm that weren't there yesterday. What? What trick is this? How did the forest uproot and take the mountain track? Give me my armour. Give me my sword. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armour, I said. Give me my sword. And so, at the cock's crow, Macdeath too prepared for battle. This was also the signal for Clinty and his fellow treemen to storm the main gate, followed as they were by the clansmen of the McHumans. But if they'd have but stopped a moment to look at the two severed heads of Donald Bain's spies, impaled on spikes about the main gate, they would not have been surprised when they found it locked. At the sound of wood pounding against wood, orcs ran to buttress the gate under the stern gaze of Mogro Nickbreak. But this was also the moment that Doko McCooligan had been waiting for. His men burst forth from their barrels. They did not attack the orcs though. Instead, they dashed across the courtyard towards the Sallyport gate. The orc war boss began to move down the stairs to rally some of his underlings and intercept the intruders, but he was confronted by Doko himself before he could alight the stone staircase down into the courtyard. Oi, you look like you're the one in charge of all these wee greenies down here. If you can fight as well as you can watch, I might be in trouble, but I didn't think so. <laughs> Neck, 
Ping. Ha! You charge as slow as you speak. Why don't you have a taste of my blade and I lie down? <laughs> And so, the orc leader Mogro Neckbreak was cut and cast down. But Docker's victory was short-lived, as out of the reception room at the top of the stairs strode Lady Macdeath and her hellhound, Spot. Ock, you ever get that? Doc on the cool again. <laughs> oh, don't look so surprised. There's no mistaking your ugly face. Spot, come. Kill him. Damn, Spot. Kill him, I say. With flame, with tooth. It is time to kill. Hell is awaiting him. Doco had begun to charge towards the Chaos Hound, but he never made it. And instead, was consumed by two plumes of hellfire, each originating from one of the beast's heads. The heat was so ferocious that it smothered the scream in his throat. He did not survive the gouts of flame and dropped down dead, a charred, cooked cadaver that sizzled and smoked. Spot immediately leapt upon the corpse to feast on his still smoking remains as, back at the main gate, the treeman continued to pound against it, but without gaining ingress. Doko's death, though, had bought the clansmen who'd been hidden in the barrels time to reach the Sallyport Gate, and after taking a detour into the nearby spence to down the stone bottles of ale that sat upon the tables there, they eventually reached the gate, throwing open the bolt and letting their fellow clansmen in. The rest of the clan duly poured into the castle, shaking their battle rattles and screaming ungodly curses as they went before pouring into the courtyard and engaging the orcs that were buttressing the main gate. As above, goblin archers shot arrows into the melee indiscriminately. The battle proper had finally begun. <laughs>